Genesis, as you probably know, if you've watched a few videos on our Motor Illustrated channel on YouTube and read some reviews on Motor Illustrated, is a very young company. In fact, it likes to say that it's only eight years young. But in that very short period of time, they've managed to do what most automakers could only dream of doing, which is, which is essentially going from complete obscurity with the exception of a Genesis coupe car and a Genesis sedan, to going, to becoming, in fact, a, well, for the moment, mildly sought after premium product that tangles, you know, not to say dukes it out per se, not yet at least, with the likes of BMW, Mercedes, Audi, definitely Infiniti, and Lexus. With this success, I think they've grown a little bit more bold. They use the word audacious. And I have to agree, because this very Genesis product, as you can see obviously in the description below, is a 2025 Genesis GV80 Coupe. It is currently the flagship product that Genesis sells. And look, let, let's, let's not pretend that they've reinvented anything whatsoever. But the thing is, the fact that they've brought this vehicle means that they have a lot of confidence in what they can do. The first reason why I, I say that is that they, they, they are unflinched by the fact that the SUV coupe trend, happily for me anyway, is on the way out. I mean, just very recently, Mercedes-Benz has said, you know what, the GLE Coupe, the GLC Coupe, we're kind of going to cut those out. And even BMW said, yeah, with the X2, we don't need the X4. So if you still want a Coupe, there's the X6. So the segment as a whole is already kind of going away, but that's not the idea behind the GV80 Coupe. This vehicle is to show that Genesis buyers can have both SUV functionality and kind of sedan elegance and driving performance. I sound, I, I'm hearing the voices coming out of my, my mouth, my face, and it sounds like I work for the marketing team, but I mean, I've been driving it for a little over an hour already. And look, I'm not gonna say that it's special, but it's, it's really, really nice. And I have to give to Genesis well, I have to give them thumbs up and kudos for being brave enough to do this. Because if you don't know what this thing costs or retails for in Canada or even the US, um, you might be in for a little bit of a shock because you wouldn't think that the Koreans uh, would have the uh, chutzpah <laughs> to price a vehicle as they have this one. But look, effectively everything that Genesis does has been packed into this. And that's the technology and the performance. And they've also loaded it up with features, with convenience. And to an extent, it's justified. Especially when you consider, you know, the options. Yes, I know Porsche, by the way, still has the Cayenne Coupe. Um, you know, the alternatives in the segment, it's still value-packed, as you would expect from a Genesis product. But honestly, I can tell you right now, the price might be the only difficult pill to swallow because everything else about it, once I show you the interior and we go for a drive, um, wow, essentially wow. Anyhow, I'll shut up now and uh, in the next few moments, we will do a walk around and then we will take it for a spin. So please hang in there. So visually, I mean, it's, no small reason why they call it the GV80 Coupe because, you know, from just about every angle, you can definitely see the GV80 um, roots in the styling. I mean, the big differences are in the front end. You have this, the, the grille is actually quite cool. It's like a twin layered matrix pattern design. And the intakes are much larger. So the front end has, is distinct to the, the Coupe. The wheels too, the, the coupe has different wheels. These 22s are beautiful. I think 20s are standard on a vehicle. What makes the coupe the coupe obviously is the flowing roof line. I mean, I do, it looks good. I just have a problem with the fact that you sacrifice capability for a little bit of a styling exercise, which I mean, I mean the downside, which is I kind of said, you know, in the intro is that SUV coupe segment is already shrinking and the trend is kind of going away. 
Uh, but anyway, that's that's that. The rear end too, different bumper. Uh, the tail lights are a little bit taller. Not that they're taller, but the, the whole hatch segment is a little bit higher. The uh, stop light is integrated. It's actually really nice. And I think the lower part of the bumper too is unique to this. I mean, just overall, it's a very good looking SUV. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it visually. Uh, like I said earlier, I mean, the only thing that might be a little bit off is that this, as you see it, is $104,000, correct, that's right. But it does include five years of everything, the valet service, maintenance, um, they'll even throw it in Canada, I said 20 inches, but those are the 20 inches for the winter tires and the wheels. Those are included in the price and they'll actually install them and store them for five years. Uh, valet service, they'll come and get it, they'll even leave you, a, you know, everything, everything is included for five years, over the air updates, uh, navigation, stuff like that. Uh, the, when all of that rolled into it, I mean, I understand the value. Now, what I don't have, sadly, because I forgot to ask, is, that's how you open the hatch, trunk volume difference between this and the regular SUV. I don't think there's much of a difference, look at this. It's actually Alcantara kind of Swedish like it's really really nice um, trunk volume is still very usable I mean because the vehicle is still so tall there's a lot of room um, I think it's a little bit smaller than the SUV but anyway there's not much of a sacrifice there but what I was saying in the intro that is that Hyundai is thrown in everything in this vehicle right soft closed doors it is is just the materials the fit finish it is it is gorgeous, gorgeous stitching. This is always nice. Um, look at the belts. In, in my tester right now, the belts are this red color. It is, it's extraordinary. This quilted Napa leather. The rear seats are heated and cooled, power operated. It is, and there's loads of room. Obviously you can see that there's tons of room for your feet to crawl across. You could sit three, but uh, I think maybe whoever sits in the middle won't be that happy. And because this is such a tall vehicle, I mean, you won't bang your head as you go in and out. Um, a quick shot of the interior and, and the front. And again, look, so many details, so many details. A bang and all of a sudden audio, this is gonna make its way into all the Genesis products in the near future. Uh, switch gear again, just, uh, it's just beautiful craftsmanship. The steering wheel, actually I can get in. Steering wheel is unique to the model too. Uh, flat bottom it's it's really nice the grip is superb let's start it up so 27 inches across OLED uh, beautiful display it's it's you know very typical Korea well it's not typical Korean product but I mean everything the functionality the displays the, the user friendliness is just fantastic um, with the model you have your drive modes right here you know, the terrain mode, drive mode, this is my mode, which I've configured, because there's a bunch of things you can actually configure in this vehicle. I'll tell you more about that in a few, uh, few moments. Storage is a little bit limited, but it's not a, it's not a deal breaker, obviously. Um, these controls, I mean, you really have to pay attention to where you're pressing, especially when you're driving, but I, mean, I, I suppose you have audio control, uh, voice controls too, but um, otherwise visibility is nice and, oh yeah, suede oh it's gorgeous it's really really a beautiful place oh yeah heads up display 12 inch which is really nice look at how thin the a pillars are that's so unusual but i mean you still have great visibility or thanks to that you have that um i think i've sent too much so it's time for a drive okay so we're driving off now in the gv80 coupe um i'm i'm looking for that extra dynamism, if that's a word, that Genesis is selling with this vehicle. Uh, that's kind of harsh of me to say, but it drives exactly like the regular GV80. Let's just put it that way. The main difference is in the powertrain. Um, just so you know, in the US, you can get 3.5 twin turbo V6 that puts out 375 HP, 391 pound-feet of torque. Same engine you get in uh, the G80, the GV80, and the GV70, uh, but you can't get that engine in the GV80 coupe in Canada because the only standard available engine and available in the US 
is the G90s 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 with the E supercharger. So essentially it's got an electronic supercharger which spools up and gives you a little extra boost. The extra kick is 409 horsepower and 405 pound-feet of torque. On a vehicle this size, this weight, you know, the extra, what is that, I can't math, 34 HP and extra torque, I mean, it's not exactly obvious, but at least you can brag that you got over 400 horsepower. But let's put it that way. Eight-speed automatic transmission standard across the board. You have the manual paddles. Uh, I showed you the drive modes, Sport Plus. Um, it's difficult to say that, you know, this is a sporty and exciting SUV, yes. When you put the hammer down, it does, didn't really pull that right there because I'm not in the sport drive mode and there's traffic, but you can adjust a whole bunch of things in the drive modes. And that's why in my drive mode, I have steering and comfort and I have the electronically controlled suspension also in comfort. Now, when you go into sport, everything stiffens up. Uh, this same suspension is the one you'll find in most Genesis products, either standard or available. It scours the road up ahead and it preloads or pre-prepares, uh, you know, the dampers to absorb or give or dampen or whatever you want to call it. The fact of the matter is, though, though this is an extremely refined SUV, I think maybe it's even in comfort mode, the suspension a little bit on the harsher side than what I would like but for the intent and purpose of this vehicle which is supposed to be you know the sport SUV version of the GV80 line it's fine it's very comfortable it's relative in fact no it's quite quiet in here oh and another thing that you can adjust is the brake pedal there's normal and sport or comfort and normal or comfort sorry I was distracted <coughs> you didn't see that um, the yeah so you can have sport brake pedal response or normal and in sport it's just so choppy until you get used to it comfort it's much more progressive and um and uh easy to use at least in my opinion um otherwise look it's it's a very luxurious vehicle would i take this over an x6 probably because i don't really enjoy the styling of the x6 now the benzes are kind of out then if you want this type of vehicle you can always get the cayenne coupe as i mentioned but it's a heck of a lot pricier it's nice but um and and i'll end it on this i mean i would still get a regular gv80 and not pay one hundred and four thousand dollars, though you probably will at least not buy it um but yeah look it's really nice i don't know that it'll sell that big or that much in canada perhaps in the us it will uh, but I'm really looking forward to the magma. Now that's that's got me excited and um, getting hotter under the collar. That didn't quite work. Anyway, thank you.